Hi, and welcome to Word Life Quiet Time with Pastor Mark. Today we are on Saturday of week 38, and we're reading, uh, our reading today is Acts 9, chapter 9, verses 32 to 43. We're going to be reading from the English Standard Version, let's follow along. Acts chapter 9, verses 32 to 43. Now as Peter went here and there among them all, he came down also to the saints who lived at Lydia. There he found a man named Aeneas, bedridden for eight years, who was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you, rise and make your bed. And immediately he rose, and all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated named means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In those days she became ill and died. And when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, Please come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the upper room. All the windows stood beside him. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and raised her up. Then, calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive, and it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And he stayed in Joppa for many days with one Simon, a tanner. So we come to our journal, and we see that the, the first question is, what is the writer saying? And the writer, the, the writer Luke, is, is relaying these, these events. And they're, they're kind of amazing events. First, Peter comes to this new town, Lydda, and comes to this man named Aeneas, bedridden for eight years. And, and he says, Jesus, Jesus Christ, not, oh, I come to make you better. Jesus Christ comes to heal you. Rise and make your bed. And it's not... Aeneas didn't have to go through all these years of physical therapy and all these painful surgeries. It was e e immediately Aeneas is able to get up and, 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 and do what he needs to do. And that's the way Jesus heals. That's the way God works. Is It's immediate and, and it's effective. But not only that, not only does, does Peter heal someone's paralysis, he he brings this person back to life, and, and yet again, it, it's not in of himself. He, it says, but Peter knelt down and, and prayed. Turns out body, he, he brought God into the situation because he knew without God, there was nothing that Peter could do. That This person, the person's dead. And yet again, it says, Tabitha, arise. That's all Peter says is, Tabitha, arise. And, and then she, she, it's like she was sleeping, she woke up, but people know a dead body when they see one. She, she was dead, there, there was no denying it. Then calling the saints and widows, she presented to her alive to, to bring comfort to them, to bring a, a healing of the hurt that had happened. In our journal, the commentary for today, Jumping ahead five years, the storyline once again reverts to Peter. The churches in and around Judea and Galilee had been enjoying a time of peace and expansion. It appears that everyone was comfortable with this arrangement. However, Jesus had told his disciples that they were to go to the uttermost parts of the earth. It was time for the next move. Peter had been traveling throughout the region. Lydda was a town not too far from Joppa on the coast. It was a little more than halfway on the road from Jerusalem to Joppa. Luke recounts a healing that happened at Lydda and how Peter was then summoned to Joppa where he raised Dorcas from the dead. The fact that the saints called Peter when Dorcas died would seem to imply that Peter had done this sort of thing in other locations. 
there were incredible miracles happening throughout the region, but it was still basically a Jewish church. Samaritans, half-Jews, and a proselyte, a convert to Judaism, had been welcomed into the church, but the big barrier had yet to be breached. Ten years had elapsed since the day of Pentecost, and yet there was still no record of a single Gentile convert to Christ. We may assume that many of the believers were still offering sacrifices and attending services at the temple, but all of this was about to change. The events in today's passage were setting the stage for an important turning point in chapter 10. So many things that we take for granted in our relationship with Jesus Christ were astonishing developments to those who first experienced them. What is happening here in the Acts of the Apostles shook the early church to its very foundation. How do we respond when God does the unexpected in our lives? Now, like, like the writer of the Word Life Quiet Time is saying, these are incredible things. These are amazing things. You know, when, when Philip goes to Ethiopian eunuch, you, you could almost sense there's this hesitancy as, as Saul is being converted. There's yet again this hesitancy on, on the Jewish church to, to be accepting of these things because there was, always, there was this massive barrier that it's us against them, it's us against them, it's believers against non-believers. And, and the heart of the matter is there, there can easily still be this wall in our churches today. There can be easily be this wall in our own lives today where the reason we are saved is so that we can go and tell others about this. You know, a dead person can't bring another dead person back to life. Only a living person living in the power of the Holy Spirit can bring new life to someone else. And that's what this, this setup is doing. We, we see Peter restoring life to someone else because he had life in himself. And, and we, we see this, this opening, this picture that is about to explode in the church being born, this, this new Gentile, Samaritan, Jewish conglomeration of, of believers coming where there is no longer Jew, nor Gentile, nor Greek, or we don't see these divisions of people. We, we see this, this beautiful picture of what God wants, and that is this one church body coming together to worship Him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I, I once again thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the mercy that you have extended to us as Gentiles who, who were not deserving of your grace. Thank you for the, the Jews who were not deserving of your grace, that, that, Lord, your plan all along was for your word to go throughout all the world, and that we would hear it, and that those of us who accept it and believe it as true would, would be able to work out our salvation, that we would be able to to love you, that we would be able to show that love to others and, and that we would be able to have hope in this life. Father, I pray for those that are watching this, that you would bless their week, you would watch over them, and as they get ready for the church service tomorrow, that they would have a longing to be with your people to worship you. And Lord, I pray all these things in your precious and holy name. Amen.